Man. Okay. Another good day. Yep. Here it's, we are. It is another day today. It today. Different shirt. See? And it, it is different shirt today. Yep. It is different shirt. But it's, you know. For the you know we we tend to record several episodes in one day, but we today do. is a different day. In the real day, it is uh, Friday, the seventh of June. Wait, reverb. Got to pause for the reverb. Twenty twenty four. Yes, that's the one. And we are again on location at the Spirit of St. Louis Airport in beautiful Chesterfield, Missouri, wherein this is the uh, dress rehearsal day for the air show coming this weekend. That's right. And, uh, and so if you guys thought yesterday's episodes were badass, you just wait. Yep. Well, well, I mean, maybe. Like, we're going to see, a, I mean, the Blue Angels were pretty badass yesterday, no yeah. doubt. But we're yeah. going to see every act today. That's right. And we're going to be able to bring you commentary on that in the middle of June. Not that it has anything to do with snow, but it's pretty awesome. Well, that's pretty cool. And yeah. you know what else is pretty awesome? We have we have another guest today. We do. We do. We do. I mean, while, while we are in the... Um, left seat and right seat in the cab of, uh, you know, the uh, trusty old F-350 here. Mm-hmm. In the back seat, we have the lovely and talented Mrs. Nicole Bogeman. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, yeah I'm glad you could be here. But I had to make sure that everybody knows that you are taken, in fact. <laughs> so, you know, as we get into this thing and you're, you know, your your wit and humor and dazzle us with all kinds of knowledge and good stuff, people are like, oh, no, uh yeah, yep. I still do have my computer up, and I will be working. At the same I time. know because she's always working. <laughs> like we even mentioned that. I know. Like she's always keeping us on track and working, and like keeping the company moving and stuff. And sure yeah. enough, like literally backseat computer on her lap, going to work. And I'm like, no, you're gonna you know grab a microphone and a headset and you know and join us. And she's like, right. yeah, yep, super excited. Yep, enough. Anyway, but yeah, okay. So that's it. That's we're here, man. This is gonna be good. Yep, this is gonna be neat, 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 neat. So we're uh, we're in a little different spot than we were yesterday. Not very much. We are, uh, we're kind of right between a couple hangers here, and uh, but we are. Oh, you know, do we range find how far we are from the runway right now? No, we did not. Okay, we'll talk to the people. I'm going to do that. All right. So um, we're 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 pretty close to exactly where we were yesterday. I mean, within within a hundred feet, right? So we have a really good shot, a really good view of the entire airstrip. So we'll be able to see lots of cool stuff. Hopefully, bring you some commentary on that. Um, but we're also going to be. Um, Doing a regular podcast episode as yes. well. Yes, you um, are going to learn about snow stuff. Yeah, sure. we are going to talk about some snow stuff. And more specifically, we're going to talk about contracts um, and and what makes a good contract. That's right. That's right. You know what? Sp- specifics, such as we are exactly 119 yards from the taxiway. Okay. And we are 237 yards from the runway. That's pretty specific. That's pretty or darn at least, specific. Or at least so says the loophole RX 1400i rangefinder. Again, specific. Oddly specific. Oddly specific. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, yeah, man, contracts. So, okay. So, we touched we, we, we touch on contracts all the time, but I don't know that we've actually done an episode yet on some some specific things to be keeping yeah, in mind on contracts. Yeah, so. and, and, and I, I just want to start. Okay, if fine. you don't mind just, by just, saying that, just take it. Whatever it's your always show. Always have a contract. Always. Yep. Uh, I <clears throat> again over the last several months, we've talked to hundreds of people, and it it is surprising to me how many people will say if somebody calls you the day before the snowstorm or the day of the snowstorm and says, "Hey, can you hit this for me? Can you take care of this lot for me?" and they go, "Yeah, sure. It'll be you know five hundred bucks. Whatever. We'll be right over." Man, if you don't have a contract with that person, you are you are really, really setting yourself up. Well, and, and a lot of that's because there's there are you know one of the things we if you listen to one of the episodes from yesterday is talking about how on a slip and fall, yep. you don't have you know there's not a contract between the person that fell. However, there's absolutely nothing governing what your what you have been contracted to do. Mm-hmm. So something goes wrong there, and it's entirely possible that the, the you know the owner of that property, when they get sued, they're going to turn around and say to you, say, well, I hired this guy to just take care of it all. And then you know, obviously they did a bad job. And if there's no contract in place, there's no no terms governing that relationship. So, yep. yeah, I mean, you, I mean, there's no scope of work um, 
principles. Yeah. There's no level of service well, and, outlined. And I mean, the, nothing. Yeah, and the other thing is that in this in this day and age, there are a bunch of ways that you can easily have a contract. Um, you know, one thing you can do is there's contract templates that you can you can download online. You can find them there. You can yeah. you can get them from us. You know, if you wanted to give us a call, 314-260-4352, or shoot us an email at podcast at swinnergroup.com. I mean, we have we have contract templates. That's one of the things we do. Yep. Um, and make it very, very easy for you to to have that set up with a really good contract that's going to give you what you need. Um, you know, another thing you can do is you can put it on your website. You know, you can, you know, if you assuming you have a website, you can tell, you know, customers of yours, people that are going to call you, you know, the onesie twosies that need help say, okay, yes, we can come do that for you. I need you to go to our website, fill out the form. And there on the bottom of the website, you know, in, in, in the bottom of that form, it says you agree to our terms and conditions. And bam, the terms and conditions is the contract. Yep. And so now you, you at least have some type of written communication from between you and the customer. Yeah. Outlining and detailing what the responsibilities are. Yep, exactly. You know? Yeah. And I, I think we'll go through the rest of this episode with the assumption that you're always going to have a contract. Yes. And so then we'll just kind of talk about what makes a good contract and what the good ideas and the bad ideas are. It'd be more fun if we yelled about it. <laughs> we just started getting all mad at each other. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? You know, what the maybe yeah. later after we hit the cooler, you know, we could see if we could <laughs> we could see if we can get a podcast flag for profanities. That'd be kind of fun. Oh. I don't think we've done that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, what what are you what are you laughing at back there? Oh, just that's funny. Well, see there, uh, bam! <laughs> First one we got it. We got a chuckle out of Nicole. Nice. All right, nice. right on. Okay, so yes, you do in fact have a contract. Is going to be our assumption. I'm good with that. All right. So all right. So so you've got it. Something else that you want to be sure to have is make sure that it's actually signed, dated. Like there's there's some type of a written. Um, uh, scribble or, or or documented activity of some kind whereby you can prove, yes, I agreed to these terms, this scope of work, and this information on this date. Here's when it happened. Yep. And I can confirm to you that my customer did, in fact, agree to these on this date. And it isn't somehow somehow in writing, whether it's yeah. uh, an email that was transmitted or it's a, a you know ink on a piece of paper it was signed digitally on an ipad and an apple pencil they filled out a form on the website something like that that you can point to that has a a a a documented you know agreement and a date no for sure and the electro some of the electronic signatures you know you can click here to e-sign and it captures your ip address and the date and the time those are those are perfectly legit as well yep um and and if it is if it is an email transmission though one thing you need to make sure of is not to you know somehow delete that or accidentally archive it somewhere you need to make sure that email either print a copy of it and keep it with the paper contract if that's what you do save the email as a pdf and and put it with your pdf whatever it is just make sure that you don't somehow accidentally lose that communication because that's that's really yeah. easy to do oh yeah yeah absolutely Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. No, you're totally right. Um, you know, another thing is that you have to. Anything else on on that before we move on? To no, I think we we've beat we've beat signed, signed and dated. Signed and dated. There you go. Right on. Okay. Cool. So yep. Signed, dated. You know who did it when. And um, saved. And saved. Yes. Oh Man, yeah. Have and you saved. been? Have you, now, when you say saved, do you raise your palms to the to the to the, <laughs> to the air? I've been you, saved. You've been saved. Nothing? No. Okay. Anyway, so um so you know the you have to also make sure that you that, that you have actually a, you understand what you've agreed to and that your customer understands what you've agreed to. That's right. Because what'll happen is, you know, yes, they sign the contract. Yes, you signed the contract. But then later when there's questions and it's, well, that's uh, that, that's not what that meant. Yeah, that's not what I didn't mean for that to be what it was. Well, then you maybe you should have read it. Right. <laughs> you know, and and a lot of times, you know, there's you know, contracts are written in in some type of foreign gobbledygook language that doesn't make any sense to anybody. And so, you know, when that happens, you know, it 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 certainly does happen and you you know, you you wind up agreeing to things that you didn't necessarily know you were agreeing to. Yeah. And that's of course problematic. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that your customer understands at least to the best of the ability and that you understand to the best of your ability. If there's something in there that you don't know what it means, then get with somebody that can tell you what that means. 
you know, now that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to hire an attorney for $300 an hour to decipher a contract for you. Um, we know some guys that can do that. Yep. Um, they can help out. Actually, if you called 314 2604 352, you could probably do that. Yeah. Is but, that a call or a text only? Either one. Totally. Either one. Okay. You can call or text. Yep. If you don't want to talk to me, which I wouldn't blame you, you can certainly text and it'll be mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, but feel, you know, but find somebody that you can ask a question to. You know, what, you know, what does this mean? What is happening? What's going on? And speaking of what is happening, did you see this chair? I this did. Just I was up? just about to, I was just about to draw your attention like to that as well. Set up a full chair. It is a chair freaking that's a rocking, rocking chair. chair. Whoa, that's like cool. it came. It's a bag chair, but it rocks. It's just swinging freely. Dude, I, mm, <laughs> I'm gonna let that go. Jason, you, you, nope, you gonna let that nope. go? Yeah, I mean, it's too <laughs> early in the day. I, if I had a dollar, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So, okay, so yeah, so make sure you understand what it is that you're doing, and then, and part of it, it may be one of the biggest things to really and truly understand is the difference between an automatic contract and a will call contract. Yeah. And an automatic contract is, you know, is where, you know, the, the customer expects you to show up and do the work, right? And so, and, and without them having to call you, those are great. I mean, those are the kind of contracts you want. However, even if it is an automatic contract, you really need to understand exactly what it is that you are authorized to automatically do. You know, you're probably not authorized to, you know, to, to post centuries on the property 24 hours a day, seven days a week and charge for that. Right. Like you're probably not authorized for that. You're probably not authorized to show up with a flamethrower and, you know, melt the snow via, you know, kick-ass means. Right. You know, so, but at the same time. But are you forbidden? You know what? Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Have you seen the, um, the, the Russian snow melter jet things that yeah. they pull around? Yeah. it's yeah. pretty awesome. But uh, uh, in all seriousness, though, you, I mean, you know, because what, what's going to happen when you're in a courtroom The customer is going to say, we have an automatic contract. We expected the vendor to automatically do this work. Yep. Right? And so what's going to happen is that's going to cause that material disagreement. In fact, that we were talking about the other day, in that if you say, no, that's not what I was supposed to do, and the customer says, well, yeah, that's what I expected you to do, now that's when a jury is going to be the one to make the decision. Yep. And so, um, so if you can outline what that is, oh, here comes the Beechcraft. You must be the first performer. Okay, so this one, God, you know what we should have done? We should have written down all the people that are going to be performing. Uh, Nicole, what? You got internet going back there, right? I do. Yeah. All right, look this, look, look this thing up. Oh, I had the page a, open up earlier. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a, it's an, it's an older twin Beechcraft, and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's amazingly awesome. From it's got a really nice color scheme. I mean, it's, I mean, it's red and black. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool, I guess. Beach eighteen. Yeah. Yep. There you Matt go. Yunkin. The Beach 18. Matt Yunkin in the Beach 18. Man, that, what a cool name. Y O U N K I N. You know, even though that's not how you say it, that's how we're going to say it. There you go. Mm-hmm. What's up, Yunkin? Yunkin. <laughs> pretty awesome. Anyway. First up, Matt Yunkin. There we go. Oh, it actually has a, an order of who's going when? No, absolutely not. Oh, that's what I thought. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, um, yeah, so, so, so automatic. Um, so, so, some tips for automatic contracts, right? So, let's say you've got an automatic contract. Um, Define in there, you know, what you're authorized to do, number one, so that you know what you're automatically authorized to do. But also note on the contract what you're not authorized to do. And that the, the, the biggest one on that is going to be property, you know, uh, monitoring, monitoring yep. services for the property, for yep. refreeze or whatever else. You want to make sure that you have that set up so that you know what you're authorized to do and what you're not authorized to do. So there's no question of that later because there, there's going to be questions. The sure. attorneys are going to get involved and they're going, I mean, that's their, their job is to complicate things and make it hard to decipher to create that material disagreement, in fact, so it has to go in front of a jury. Yep. Right? So a good plaintiff's attorney is going to be able to do that, and they're going to pick your contract apart to do so. So, you know, so so understanding those kinds of things is important. Um, and then on um, some other things, you're, are you right over there? Oh, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Oh, okay, gotcha. He's trying you. to do that quietly, so you just keep going. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So, all right. So, um so some some other things that you're probably not automatically authorized to do is to stage equipment. Um, you're probably not auth- you know, automatically authorized to uh, and, you know have staging fees and to have wait time and things like that that are on the contract. So when and the reason that when that becomes important is when the uh, when when the allegation is well you should have had people there already. Yeah. Why didn't you? 
and you can say, well, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, it's a one inch trigger, man, and there wasn't, a, you know, there's an inch of snow on the ground. We got there an hour later. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, why didn't you have them there earlier? What prevented you from having somebody on site? It's an automatic response. You should have automatically been there. You know, and those those types of things come up and happen. So, you know, really think through all of the things that you have to do and think about what are you authorized to do and what are you not authorized to do when you have an automatic dispatch on the contract. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> that, again, becomes particularly important, like you mentioned, for refreeze, um, you know, next day or third day or whatever on refreeze monitoring. Now, you know, if if that is something you're going to do, it needs to be in your contract. Now, if it's not in your contract that you're going to do refreeze monitoring, um, I, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Kim, but my advice would be to not do it. Not say, oh, you know what? As a freebie, oh, just run absolutely. by there real quick. Absolutely. If, it's not, if you're not con- contracted to perform that service, don't perform it. Right. Because That's if, my advice. Yeah. If you do, now you have to go all the way through. So if right. you go there... And you, and you say, nope, I didn't find any ice. Okay, and then it turns out there was ice and somebody slipped and fell, you're, you own it. Right. Um, if, you know, you know, at the same time, if you go there and you do find ice and then the property manager says, no, I'm not going to let you service, okay, well, fine, but you got to document that really, 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 really well. Yeah. Um, but to your point, Jason, at the end of the day, if you are not authorized to do a service, do not perform that service. If right. the customer says, hey, will you go by and take a look at that? Say yes, and then send them a bill to do it. You know, you, you know. Um, and here's another thing that we see all the time too: is is uh, oh, here comes Yunkin, rolling down the runway. I'm waiting for something exciting to happen, but the people listening don't know what's going to happen. No, they can't see. You know it. if it's exciting. No idea. He is off though. He's no. in the air. Oh my gosh! He's in the air, gears up, gears up, and he's 25 foot off the deck. There he goes. I hear him. Man, that Not sounds quite. good. That does sound good. I dig that. Seems yeah. like he might be first then. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, we saw him taxiing out. There's Nicole. But is he but is he just gonna fly or is he gonna do cool stuff? No, he does cool stuff. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, um so so you know, something that we see a lot of times and this happens particularly with nationals. You know, and we've you know, we've on this show and in in forums and I mean things that we've done, we we are not uh, an outfit that bashes the nationals. That's not something that we do. Um, you know, they've got their place and if you and if you play along with them you're gonna be fine. Um, that said, what you do need to understand and realize is that a lot of the nationals will put in their contract that you have to monitor the the property. Now Here's something. They can't make you perform a service and not compensate you for it. So something that you need to keep in the back of your mind is, okay, how am I being paid on this property? So if you're being paid a flat rate, a flat rate seasonal amount, and that scope of work includes monitoring services, you got to monitor. It's not, yep. it's, I mean, that's not a choice you have. You can't send a bill for it. It's not something that then magically happens later. You have to, you absolutely must provide that service. Yep. And you cannot charge for it. It is included in your scope of work and you're paid seasonally for it. Now, if you're on a property that pays you per occurrence and the scope of work requires you to monitor, now we get into a gray area. Yep. Okay. This is where the contract requires you to do it. The contract does not specifically provide you uh, um, um, any compensation for that service. However, it does require you to do it. So that's something where if monitoring is required and you're paid per service, if it was me, I would be asking my customer or the national or whoever it was I'm working for, you know, what, what is my compensation for this, right? So what is, how do I get paid for this monitoring service? And um, see what they say. You know, they may just say, oh, nope, that's something you have to do, in which case you can say, well, I'm not doing that, and then decide whether or not, you know, you're going to keep that contract. Right. But that is something to absolutely be looking for in the scope of work that you have with these, with anybody, is is looking to see, do you have a monitoring requirement? Because that's a big, big, big deal. Yeah. And again, and we've, we've talked about this again, kind of at length in, in many previous episodes, but <clears throat> just to kind of hammer on that point a little bit, if it says they're going to authorize you one round of salt compensation wise but then you also have to monitor the property um take a real close look at that because that's that's one of those ones they try to sneak in there yep oh yeah yep 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 so um let's um so let's jump over to will call for a minute okay um 
something on will calls that, that we suggest doing is if you have a will call contract, get something in the contract that says something to the effect of, uh, you know, this is a will call contract, and because it's a will call contract, we're, you know, you, know, you the customer, are making the decision on what's happening. Um, hang on. I'm sorry. Look to your right and look up. So I I'm going to say three o'clock high for you. Yeah. Not the aircraft. There's a white and a red streamer. Oh, I see that. Fall. Are those skydivers? Maybe. Um, well, their chutes are not deployed. That that's what I'm wondering. Like, what what what, what are we looking at? So what we're looking Did at? Did somebody is, just jump out of the Beechcraft? Maybe. No, because they were above the Beechcraft as he went flying by. Oh. Yeah. Like I was watching. I was mad. I was watching old Yunkin over there. And uh, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, maybe somebody well, like it looks like somebody threw giant like rolls of toilet paper out of an airplane and just kind of fluttering their way to the ground at this point. Yep. yep. But Interesting. Anyway, yeah, weird. All right. So anyway, so hey, Nicole, you got the show prep up because people can hear the uh, whatever that thing is taxing out in front of us. Well, it's great big old jet. You oh, you know what? what is like that though. a C nine? Uh, I believe that's a 141, but I don't know what the Navy would call it. I don't know. Well, I don't see either one of those letter number combinations on the page. Do you see a picture of that aircraft? Let's see. Come on, man. You're not being allowed to help back there. Yeah, I don't yeah. see one, man. It might okay. be a static yeah. one that just you know got what, here. You know what's probably happened? The tower did a will call. <laughs> for that airplane. <laughs> Could be. Wait, Could it be. might you see be what I did there? P-8A Poseidon. Oh, the Poseidon, the P-8. Oh, that is a P-8. Yep, yep, you're right. You're totally right. That's exactly what that is. There we go. Yep. Okay. So, anyways, so uh, I hear Yunkin. I don't see him, though. Did Somewhere. we see the non-shooter? Whatever. Shooter? No, they're gone. Uh, oh, no, they're way over oh, here Oh, they're now. way over there. But they're yeah, low. I don't know what. They're, like, they're not landing anywhere near the. Uh, well, whatever it is, it's just drifting with the wind. Huh. Yeah, and it's just coming down and in the trees it's over in there. in the trees. Interesting. That's super weird, dude. Yeah. Hopefully all is okay. Yeah, I mean, that's dangerous. Anyway, whatever. So there okay. There are parachuters. Yeah, well, they, if, if those were parachuters, their chutes didn't open and they just landed. And in they the were trees. falling way too slow. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. would have been at terminal velocity by then. True. Huh. Well, okay. We're uh, okay. Anywho, so um, we'll update you if we find. Yeah, out. yeah, 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 yeah. Moving right along, um, the. Um, uh, will call stuff is something where your customer is making the decision on when you go to work. Okay, understand there is no riskier contract than a will call on a residential type facility. When I say residential, I mean apartments or condos or you know anywhere that there are there are human beings residing within the property that you're servicing. A will call on a residential property is the single riskiest type of service you can possibly offer. Just expect to get sued. If you haven't, it's only a matter of time. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, and so with, with will calls, you know, everybody that gets that does snow removal starts with a will call contract. I mean, you're going to have them. There's no way around it. Um, if we, you've, we still do have a couple. Well, I mean, they're United States federal government facilities. And by, by will call, it's, you know. Yeah. It's, it's it's more it's more by federal law than yeah. by, than by anything else. But, well, that's true. But yeah, but yeah, but we you know pretty you know. But there's there's something there's 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 a certain learning curve and you know dues to be paid, if you will, that are associated with that with will call contracts. But you really need to make absolutely positively sure that you have your the the the, the verbiage in the contract to cover you on a will call. So yeah. if you don't, you know. Give us a buzz. I'm going to tell you the number later. I'm not doing it again. Not doing it again? Not doing it again. See, if I had it in front of me, I would tell you. Would you like an ink pen? You can write it on your page. Uh-huh. Right here, I'll tell you what the number is. You know, so, just so Jason. So, can so write one it down. last time, we're going to so tell you the number. Jason can write it down, not for the listeners. It's 314-260-4352. If you were listening, that wasn't for you. That was for Jason over there. But go but, ahead and feel free to <laughs> use it and call us or text us. Yeah, fair. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And then... Um, uh, you know, I think that there's, um, there are a lot of other aspects to contracts that are, that they, they get into some nuance information that, um, that realistically, unless you are really, really curious about it, um, it's not going to be a, a, a like, that's not going to be an engaging conversation as you're driving yeah. down the road, listening to us right now. Yeah. That's not, you're going to, we don't want anybody wrecking. So true. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> can we jump back to Will Call for a second? Because I have questions. Yeah, sure. So recently we were in, um, gosh, were we, I think we were in Des Moines. And we talked to a couple of people. And one of them said that the plowing is automatic, but the salting is Will Call. Yep. And I, I don't know that I understand the 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 concept there. Um so, so, so I, I guess I guess what I'm saying, like I think you you plow the lot. You obviously have not removed every single bit of snow. You need to put a chemical down behind the plow, let it run up and work to finish clearing. Well, so okay, so so I guess what I'm saying is that you are still if if you plow it automatically, but they don't authorize the salt, um, you still have very slippery conditions. Um, on site, yeah, and so here's so here's the deal with that. So th- there are um, there are property management companies, and there's at least a couple REITs that um, that in their scope they they write that their preference for uh, for for de-icing is uh, is is radiant de-icing, and so what happens is the they they've decided that the the black asphalt right the black top. Mm-hmm. Will uh, will heat up with the sun's rays, and will promote melting, and so um, they they would prefer that. And now they're using you know because it's it's you know it's more environmentally friendly. They don't want all the chlorides to be applied. Right? Sure, and and, so, and and while that can happen, certainly it can also be really freaking cold, and the surface temperatures are still below freezing. Eh, I mean, if you've got blacktop and you've got sun, I mean, I mean, it's, you're going to, you're going to get melting, even if it's super, super cold. But at the same time, what's happening there is that they're, they're wordsmithing their way into not wanting to pay for de-icing services. Right. And so plowing is something where they, you know, they, they, they want that vendor on the hook to automatically remove the snow. Right. So they want to mm-hmm. push the snow off. They want to, they want to plow, but they may not want to pay for salting. You know what I mean? If it's gonna be if it's gonna be forty degrees that day and the sun's gonna come out as soon as it's done snowing, they may say, "Nah, we don't want to pay for that," and then they don't they don't have to pay for the salt. Whereas you know other times that may be you know uh, super cold and the sun's not gonna come out and they need to go ahead and de-ice it, but the customer wants to make that decision to save the money. Um, that's 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 why they do that. Um, it's it's it, it, I, I think that it's a it's a cost saving endeavor on the part of the property owner or manager. Okay. And it is, um, it is very, uh, that is a not attractive model for a vendor. Right. And I guess, I guess the, the, the main point I was driving at was the liability yep. of, of having a contract like that. I, I would just, I'm just following a logic train here that tells me that you would maybe be at an increased liability there. Oh, 100%. Okay. 100%, especially if you're if you're in a scenario where, you know, I mean, as the vendor, it becomes your responsibility. Uh, it's the F15 demo team starting to taxi mm-hmm. out. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> now now we're, now we're getting somewheres. But they're taxiing the wrong way. No 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 no, dude. No 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 no. No 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 no. We're using 26 left. Go the other way. Go the other way. Maybe he can do what he wants. Maybe just oh. maybe he's relocating. Okay, well some a pair, some uh, a uh, skydiver just landed with a great big American flag behind him. And how did we miss that? Uh, I don't know. Came from behind the behind the hangar. Uh, you are so oh, focused I, on what you're saying. Oh, there's one twirling. Oh yeah, I got another one. You're right. Yep. Now that is not. Oh, you know what? I wonder when they jumped out of whatever plane they jumped out of. I wonder if the, what hit the ground first was some like they may have been getting wind wind uh they may that may have been something that they used to oh, for to, where the to show the them. show the winds oh that could be that would make sense yeah yeah okay all right anyway so um so yeah so so um crap i was i mean i felt like i was on a roll i was all you, concentrating and then an you were, pulled we, out were and we were we were talking about the liability of the will call um, DIC. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so when there's a slip and fall, right? What's going to happen on that will call account is you, as the vendor, you are going to be asked, "Did you advise your customer that they should have salted today?" And you're going to say, "No." Every time I ask them to salt, they tell me no. And then you're going to be asked, "Well, don't you think that as the professional, it's your responsibility to make that recommendation?" And you're going to say, "No, that's their problem." And then the jury's going to look at you and say, "What a jerk." 
why not just make a phone call? Right. And that's something where, you know, as, as an industry standard, if you will, um, it is very advisable for you to tell your customers, yes, I think you should do this. Yep. And so, you know, even if it's a will call contract, you still need to be advising your customers and saying, hey, I think you need to do this. Yeah. And, and, and part of, um, part of what you need to do when you do that too, uh, is not just saying, Hey, I I think you should salt. You should say, Hey, here is a very detailed weather forecast period. Here are the conditions on the ground at your facility period. I highly recommend we, we apply some sort of, uh, chemical treatment to, to de-ice. Yeah, and that way, and, and then, you know, again, maintain those records, yep. write that down, keep that. And that could be one email that goes to all your customers. Yeah. You know, you can send one email to every single customer that says, hey, this is what's happening. This is what we think you should do. This is what we're doing on our automatics. And then, bam, you're done. Yep. And then if somebody doesn't decide to do that or, or, or even worse, tells you to do something opposite, now you have documented evidence and proof that says, I told them to do this, and they said no. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna. I think we're gonna call it there on contracts for now, because I mean, really, anything else gets. I mean, you start getting into, you know, jurisdictions, and you start sure. getting into, yeah, you know, what you know, the different types of courts, and how you're gonna do this. And how you're, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that happen in contracts that don't that just that, that, they're not they're not fun. Right? Yeah, and you get into city, county, state, cross jurisdictional stuff, and we're just not gonna do that. Yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. So we are gonna let you all go though, because. Love y'all. Yep. yep. Bye. <laughs> there you go. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing stuff here though. So um, hopefully you uh, hopefully you hopefully you're liking these things. If you are, we would uh, we would like to hear from you. I mean, we can see people downloading this thing. We can see people you know listening to it, getting views on YouTube's and on all. I mean, all the platforms. I mean, we we know y'all are listening or at least downloaded. So uh, shoot us something. Let us know what you think. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Very code three one four two six zero. 4352 or you can email us at podcast at swindergroup.com either way love to hear from you talk to you soon see ya